Hello and welcome to Wisdom Bites. Hope you're well. Thank you once again for joining us. Very much appreciated. And in today's packed program, I'm going to be looking at a question which I've been looking at since the beginning of 2023. There were two targets and the first one was met with the RSI MTF line and the second target, which is yet to be met. And I'm asking the question, are we going to meet that target? What is that target, you ask? Well, that is the Pi cycle target we set at the beginning of 2023. With the way the Pi cycle is moving, it looks like Bitcoin is on a knife edge, whether it's going to actually top out in 2024 or 2025. So we'll have a look at that. We'll also have a look at the 60 day cycle to see whether we have bottomed out in this cycle. And I asked a question in last Monday's video, are the Bitcoin miners front running Bitcoin? And so far, so good. And I'll go into that as well. We'll also have a look at the wider market. So if that sounds interesting, without further ado, get yourself a cup of tea, sit yourself down, eyes on the screen, and let's get cracking. But before I begin, the usual polite reminder, please remember everything in my videos is just for educational purposes. So please always do your wider research before you make any investment decisions or any swing trade decisions. Okay, so we're going to move straight into the main part of this video, and that is... Why is Bitcoin on a knife edge in the current cycle? Well, we have to go back to the first cycle and to see a pattern that's been developing over the last 15 years. The red vertical line here is the halving that we had back in 2012. And after we bottomed out, we came up to hit the Pi cycle red line before this halving. In the second halving, exactly the same thing happened. We'd bottomed out here and before the halving in 2016, we came and hit the red line here and we nearly hit it before then at this point. So nearly two hits there, but definitely one over here. The third halving back in 2020, we hit the red line in 2019 before the halving. So in the current cycle, we had two targets that once we'd bottomed out here at 15,400, our first target was this yellow line, the RSI MTF line, which we hit at 40,000. But because of the ETF story that was playing out in the background, the expectation at this point was to actually keep on going higher, which it exactly did at about 49,000 here before retreating recently. But the second target was this RSI red line here. But the second target was this RSI red line here, the 350 simple moving average on the daily chart. Currently, this is at 62,000. So why is this on a knife edge? As we can see, currently, it's way, way off that price. So we've got two questions here. The first one is, as per the previous three cycles, we've always hit this red line before the halving, this red vertical line. So is this going to be the first cycle where the price does not come up to the red line before the halving? And is there a possibility that we could have a big move into the red line somewhere along here before the halving? Obviously, everything is possible with Bitcoin, as we know. But if this was to actually happen, then we would be getting to a point which will be at exactly around about the all-time high. So why is that significant? To answer that question, we have to go and zoom out on the BLX chart on the monthly time frame. The first cycle here, as we can see, the all-time high, we didn't break this all-time high in this cycle until about four months after the halving. In the second cycle, we didn't break the all-time high until nine months after the halving. And in the last halving here, back in 2020, we didn't break the all-time high until seven months after the halving. So if we were to actually come and hit the Pi cycle, which is currently at 62,000 here, so as the current price rises from its current 42,000, the red line is obviously going to be moving higher to the point where it will be around about the same price as the previous all-time high at 69,000. So why is that important? And I've been saying for many, many months now that if we were to break our all-time high at around about the halving time, if we zoom in, we can see this clearly. And I've been saying for many months now that if we were to actually hit the all-time high and break it around the halving time, that would be a signal that we're going to go on a left translated cycle. 
and end this current bull market within 2024. Obviously, nobody has a crystal ball. We can only go by what the charts are telling us. And the break above the all-time high around 69,000 at the halving, it would increase the probability of a left translated cycle, i.e. a bull market top before the halfway stage from the bottom of the market. So we have a four-year cycle from a bottom to the bottom, and we bottomed out here at the end of 2022, so if we top out before the end of 2024, then that would be a left translated cycle. And then we would have a elongated and extended bear market. This is what would the expectation would be based on the cycles theory. So something has to give. Either we don't hit the red line before the halving, or if we do, then we're going to have a left translated cycle. So that's why we are on a knife edge with what's happening with Bitcoin. And not many people are aware of this. It would be interesting to get people's comments on what you think will happen. So leave your comments below the video and let me know what you think. Are we going to break the all time high at the halving? Or is this cycle going to be the first one which is not going to hit the pie cycle here? The other thing to consider very, very important is that in all of the last five peaks of the Bitcoin price, since 2010, when it came out, the green line has always crossed the red line. As I've shown you many, many times, I don't want to go through that again, but if the price was to rise very, very quickly up here now, between now and in the next 10 weeks, then this green line would be threatening to hit this red line in 2024. And this is why the left translated cycle, i.e. a top before the end of 2024, is really on the table. Should we break the all-time high around the halving time? You can see in the last cycle, the green line came up to the red line right at the top of the 64,000 here. And every one of the peaks before that, the green line crossed the red line. And that is one of the major signals of where the bull market for Bitcoin will end. So incredibly fascinating. Let me know what your comments are, what you think is going to happen around about the halving. Okay, I'm going to move on to see whether we've actually bottomed out within this 60-day cycle based on the narrative that I gave you last Monday. And I asked the question whether the Bitcoin miners were front-running the Bitcoin price. So I did the video on this red candle. That was Monday last week. When everybody was thinking that this is going to go down, I was asking the question whether we were bottoming out on the Bitcoin price based on what was happening with the Bitcoin miners. Because the Friday before this candle, i.e. this one here, on that Friday, if you look at Marathon, we had a bottoming out candle here, which is basically a hammer candle, which has a long wick at the bottom, which means that the price was being pushed down, but the buyers came in and pushed it all the way back up here, which usually means two things, i.e. there's an exhaustion of the downtrend and also the entry into the market of the bulls to buy up at opportunistic levels down here. And this was happening on not just in Marathon, but many of the other Bitcoin miners. This was Riot Platforms on that Friday. This was Clean Spark on that Friday. And this was Bitfarms on that Friday. So you can see that the Bitcoin miners sometimes front run the Bitcoin price and many times it's the other way around. And the main thing is to try and pick out what's happening at one time, which is the one that's front running the other. So this was the Monday's candle when I was asking that question. And then the next day, this is exactly what happened. The Bitcoin price was actually putting in a bottoming candle here. Does that mean that price can't come back down here? Of course, it doesn't mean that. But what it does do is it tells us that the momentum at this point is to the upside. And this is exactly what we've got now. We've come up from the 38,500 here all the way up to 42,800. And the question now is, where does it go? We are having a high spinning top here, which is an indecision candle because we've come to the top of these candles here. So far, what we can ascertain here is that we are in a range between this level here at 45,000 and this level here at 40,000. And we can see quite clearly it's range bound between this. And on two occasions, we've had a fake out here, which was the ETF story. And then we've had the fake out to the bottom side. But in essence, all the way through, we've really been range bound. And if that was to continue, then that would be extremely bullish for the Bitcoin price when we look at the 60-day cycle. But before we go on to the 60-day cycle and have a look at Bitcoin, we need to just have a look at the background of what's happening in the wider markets. And as I mentioned in last week's video, that we were breaking up above this level here with this weekly candle. And what I was waiting for was a follow-through here last week, as this was a very bullish sign to have broken through this 
neckline here, which goes all the way back to this level. But before that, as we know that these were the levels that we were looking at many months ago, and then we came up to this level, having created a cup and handle pattern here, and then breaking through the neckline all the way across there. So these patterns are incredibly powerful. And if we have a look at the daily chart over here, we can see that having broken the neckline, there's been a positive follow through to the upside here. Now we are getting more and more away from the 21 simple moving average on the daily chart here. So having broken through at this point, we've come back and retested it only once. So somewhere along the line here, I would expect it to come back and retest it. And it may well be at this point here, as we can see, there is a rejection of higher prices with this long wick at the top. But we did get one back here, but we carried on to the upside. So it may well be that we go a little bit further up before we come back and retest this 21 moving average. But so far, so good. The SPX is looking quite healthy to the upside. And if we have a look at the 10 year yield here, I mentioned with this candle last week that the probability is now to the downside. So we've started with that tone with this red candle today. So I would be expecting this to come back down to break this level here. And similarly, the dollar, we had a look at this candle last week. The momentum to the upside was coming to a bit of a halt here. And we had a look at the 61.8 from this point. And we've got a rejection here at the 78.6. So this would be another reason for the price to now start coming down. So expect the dollar to come back and revisit this level here around about 100. And that is really part of the decline that we've had since the 115 up here. And we are creating the lower highs along the way. And this is just part of the story of that decline for a three year move to the downside. We had a look at it last week that it was creating this cup and handle pattern over here. And we've broken out of that and retesting the highs from all along back here in 2011. So we'd come to this neckline on a number of occasions. So sooner or later, we're going to break out of this range. We have also an inverse head and shoulders formed as well as an ascending triangle here. So having made the top at this point, retested it and re being rejected, we can expect it to come back all the way back to this trend line at around about 1930 before we make the final ascent and break this range for an explosive move to the upside. So certainly on a two year view, gold is looking incredibly bullish. And the Russell 2000, we have a neckline which is about to be broken. We did break it up here, which now appears to be a fake out, but we are coming back. As I mentioned in last week's video, the chances are we're going to come and retest it so currently, last week, we came and retested it back to the same neckline here. So it looks like only a matter of time before we break out here. So the wider markets are looking incredibly bullish with the dollar going down, the 10 year yields going down, SPX going up, the Russell 2000 going up. So how does the 60 day cycle fit into that narrative for Bitcoin? So in the current 60 day cycle, we started here in the middle of December. We are now on day 49. It is conceivable that we have put in a bottom here of the cycle. But it's also conceivable that we become range bound up to this 45,000 and then come back and make a proper cycle low at the end of the 60 day cycle here. So this is what we've got to wait for. But tentatively, we have made a cycle bottom here so far. That was last Tuesday. And if we were to break out of the 45,000, then we would be confirming this as the low of this cycle. And the first sign of this being a bottom would be to actually clear this candle here, which is at 42,152. So far, while today we are above that level, we haven't actually had a close above this on a daily candle yet. So we still haven't confirmed this as the bottom of this cycle, even on a tentative basis. But the signs are looking good. And as I mentioned last week, what would be really quite bullish is that having actually faded below this level here at 40,000 down to 38 and a half and recaptured it with this candle here. Currently, we are finding resistance on this trend line here, which goes all the way back to this level back in October here. So you can see we've been finding support all the way along this line twice there, third time there fourth time there and now using it as resistance. So this could be a classic having broken the support line here, coming back and retesting it. And this is something that I mentioned in last week's video as well. So what we really need to do is to recapture this trend line and then retest this level here at 45,000. Once we get above the 45,000, that would be the level where we can say that this is now a new cycle and we should be now going much higher 
into the midpoint of the new cycle here. So last week I mentioned that we'd broken this level here. This was the bottom of the cycle or the start of the new cycle. And with this candle, we actually had a failed cycle. Having risen into the midpoint, created a right translated cycle here. The unexpected happened and we actually had a cycle failure at this point, having broken below this point here at the beginning of the cycle. So we can see quite clearly with Bitcoin, anything is possible. We are at a critical juncture though here and coming to the underside of that trend line. It really is 50-50 before we do this or do this to the downside. And if we have a look at the eight simple moving average on the weekly chart, we can see that we are battling this support line, which we haven't actually broken through since October 2023. So we've been finding support all the way along here, but now certainly we are retesting that to see whether we can get back above it. But you only have to look at this candle here though. This is a weekly candle close last night. This candle here is giving us a clue of what is about to happen over here. And as we know, in these money markets, nothing is guaranteed, but what we do have is probabilities. So what I see here is that the bearish pressure to the downside has been exhausted and the bulls have moved in at this point and pushed the price all the way back up here again. So the momentum is back to the upside here. So with a higher probability, I would expect this price to be moving to the upside. And if history is to go by, you only have to look left here with all these wicks at the bottom, Yes, we had one at the top here, but on the whole, there was a lot of buying pressure pushing these prices back up here. And this is what led to that. And if we go further back, you can see that this kind of a candle with a long wick at the bottom, usually you find that at the bottom of a trend and it usually goes to the upside. Same here. So these are very important signals to pick up in the markets, whichever market you're in. If you see a long wick at the bottom like this with a small body candle, it's giving you a very strong signal that we are about to move to the upside. So here we are one more time, creating a long wick at the bottom. We've fallen down from 49,000 down to 38,000. Something also to make a note of is that since we bottomed out here at 15,400, we've had a series of 20% falls. From here, the first fall was 22%. The second fall here was exactly 20%. And the third fall here was 21%. So in the whole of 2023, we had three falls of 20% each. And currently from the 49,000 to the 38,500, we've had a 21% fall. But we also know that in a bull market, Bitcoin has a habit of falling between 30 and 40%. But this recent trend of 20% falls only may well be a change in the trend. And we've just had a 20% fall. So there is a likelihood and a possibility that we have bottomed out here and that we're on our way to the next leg. Just like here, just like here, and just like here. And I want to bring something to your attention regarding the ETF story that's still lurking in the background. While it hasn't really played out and a lot of people have taken their eye off the ball, we have to remember one of the reasons why the price has fallen for Bitcoin from 49 down to 38 was the excessive amount of sale that was going on on the Grayscale exchange. But what we've got today is that the Bitcoin ETF advertising may start to appear on Google from today onwards. Up to today, they were not allowed. But with the advent of the ETF approvals, the criteria for Google to allow these adverts is going to be discussed today. And as a result, they may well come to the conclusion that the ETF advertising would be allowed from today onwards. So something to be aware of, if we scroll up here, we can see what the reasoning is. So from today, Google is set to update its policies to allow certain cryptocurrency products to be advertised on major search engines. And the Bitcoin ETFs appear likely to meet the criteria, which is obviously going to spark speculation within the crypto industry. So let's see what happens, what the effects of that. And should this candle actually turn out to be a bottoming out candle with the expected rise to the upside, then there is an incredible opportunity that I can see that is developing within the Bitcoin miners, which most people will not have picked up on. What we have here is that the Bitcoin price has fallen from 49,000 to 38 and a half, and that is a 21% fall. But what you've got with the Bitcoin miners is that there is a leverage play to the upside as well as a leverage play to the downside. And with the Bitcoin miners, while the Bitcoin has gone down by 21%, most of the Bitcoin miners 
have bottomed out at around about 53%. And despite the reversal that we've had last week with the Bitcoin miners, the upside potential to the recent highs only a few weeks before that, the upside potential is still around about 75%. While for Bitcoin, the upside potential we're talking about is about 16%. So you can see quite clearly that the leverage play with the Bitcoin miners and the potential is much, much greater. And this is what we normally cover in our Bitcoin miners private member section. And on some of the miners, the two indicators that we normally use as a trigger point for the reversal to the upside, on some of the miners, like here on CleanSpark, there is a buy signal now imprinting. So in the next video that I do for the Bitcoin miners in the private member section, I'll be looking at some of the miners who are now printing this particular signal. And that could well be a great signal with a 12 to 24 months view with the Bitcoin miners. Because on some of the miners, not all of them, Yet, but we are on the edge for most of them now. So in the private member section with the Bitcoin miners, we do use a couple of signals which triggers off a buy signal or a sell signal with these Bitcoin miners. And in the next video that I do in the private member section, I'll be going through these buy signals on many of the other Bitcoin miners to see exactly where we are and where we're heading. And obviously everybody has to do what they have to do. It's my job to just bring opportunities to your attention and what you do with them is your business. And the reason why I think this is an incredible opportunity of a lifetime, and we may never get this opportunity again, but if you just look at a few of the Bitcoin miners from the previous halving, we are currently around this level here, just before the halving. And with the Bitcoin miners, we're talking from the halving itself to the end of the bull market was at 200x. So $1,000 invested here would be worth 200,000 over here. So sometimes people think that that's just a one-off. Well, if we have a look at Riot, so this is another miner from the halving here. This went up to 136x. So 1,000 invested here would be worth 136,000 at the top of the market. Another one that was around at the time of the halving last time was CleanSpark, which went up 41x. So 1,000 equals $41,000. So there is a consistency amongst the Bitcoin miners to totally outperform the Bitcoin price. And if you want to compare the Bitcoin price from the halving here, even if you take it from the COVID situation well before the halving to the 69,000 would give you a 16x. So all the Bitcoin miners outperformed the Bitcoin price by many times. So we are currently at this red dotted line here at the halving with Marathon here. And just like what it was over there and we got this, we are expecting until the end of the bull market here, another similar rise of this type over here. How far that will be, nobody knows. But certainly, if you examine the charts, this is what we would expect for it to happen over the next 12 to 24 months. And if you have any interest in the Bitcoin miners and want to look into this opportunity for the next 12 to 24 months, you can join us with the Bitcoin miners by clicking the join button here. And for the price of a coffee per week, you can have access to all the previous videos, the long-term portfolio that we have, and all the swing trades that we've done so far. But one of the best things that we do there is actually look at the ratios method, which is a way of actually increasing the portfolio without taking any risk at all. And this is a really good opportunity at this point before the halving to set up a long-term portfolio over the next 12 to 24 months with a few selected Bitcoin miners that have a high opportunity and potential to move to the upside on a leverage play to the Bitcoin price. And these are the objectives that we have with the private members. We're running the four year cycle portfolio there, which is what we call the long term portfolio. And we increase that by using the ratios method and by doing swing trades here. And this is what we cover. We do the Bitcoin analysis as per usual, but we also use the 60 day cycles to get into swing trades. But the mainstay of the member section is really the long term portfolio because we want to grow the Bitcoin miners on a leverage play for the next 12 to 24 months. And I also do members requests for any analysis that you want me to do for the Bitcoin miners. Okay, we'll leave it there. I hope you found value in the video. If you did, then please do remember to like and to subscribe if you haven't already done so and to turn on the notification bell. If you've got any comments, questions or suggestions, then leave them in the comments below. Until the next time, take care, stay safe and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.